Dead wax. What's up, all you doodle bears, and welcome to the Dead Wax Show with Waffles and the Stooge. Get out of the groove and get into the Dead Wax. I am Waffles, and as always, I'm joined by my best friend, and older brother, Stooge. Wow, that that you got such incredible range. I the thought pipes. that was Freddie Mercury. I thought that was Freddie Mercury. I know. Mercury for a it actually was Freddie Mercury. I was channeling him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. You were possessed by Freddie Mercury, and he came through and, and yeah, did that. In more ways than one, my friend. That How is are you? awesome. How are you, Stu? How's life? I, I'm actually doing pretty good right now. I am feeling the FIFA fever. The uh, FIFA we fever. We just had the, the World Cup finals this morning. Yes. The team from Argentina defeated the French players. The what? And, uh, I said the French players. That's my oh, bad French. French accent. Okay. Yeah. Sick. They said... The Argentina team came in and were dominating for like 80 minutes of the game. Just saying there's only 90 in regulation. Only 90 minutes in a, in a soccer game. Usually yeah. they have stoppage time, which means they go over a little bit because they never stop the clock. Even if someone's down on the field dying, but like, keep the clock, clock rolling. Going. Clock keeps going. While we yeah. fix them. Yeah. They got stuff to do. So, yeah. yeah, they'll be on there doing like CPR and that clock's still ticking. And Dang. then at the end, once the, the time's expired, they add stoppage time where it's like, this is about this much time that that lasted. So yes. we'll add it back onto the clock. Yes. It's the, 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 how lackadaisical they are with the rules in soccer drives me insane sometimes. Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, it's like uh, in football, like they got to get the exact spot, you know, and, and, yes. and they'll, they'll stop the game, do replay, make sure they got it right, uh, which can also be a bummer sometimes. But soccer just like, oh, it went out of bounds right here. I'm going to run down the field about 10 yards before I throw it back in. You know? nice. the, yeah. Anyways, so 80 minutes they got the lead. Argentine does. And it's like, oh, yeah, they're going to win this. And then France freaking scored two goals in the last 10 mm. minutes to drive it into overtime. And then Argent, uh, Ar the Argentine team scored again in overtime, but there was still time left. And France scored again, so they went into penalty kicks. And uh, uh, Argentine. Uh, how do you even say that name? I'm like blanking on Argentine. Argentina. <laughs> Argentina. <laughs> nice. The Argentines. Yeah. The Argentines. Argentina. Uh, the Argentina. Yeah. Ar you get more of their um, their penalty kicks in, or whatever you want to call them. So yeah, they won, and uh, it was. I'm not Beautiful. super into soccer. I'll watch a soccer game if it's a big one, like the finals. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was probably the most exciting uh, soccer game I've ever seen. Heck so. yeah. Yeah, the Argentinagers did quite well. The Argentinianagers, the Teenage Mutant Argentinians. Um. <laughs> <laughs> we have to make shirts that say that. That is so funny. <laughs> they uh, they beat the uh, the French people. The French man, good thank heavens they beat the French. I'm so sick of those French winning everything. France, they won last time too when they had the World oh, Cup. Oh, did they? they? Have to do the World Cup every four years. Did you know that? I did not know that. Look at that sports you're learning. Speaking of sports, we went to sport last night, didn't we? That's right, everybody. We went to a sport together. I dragged I dragged Waffles out to sport last night, and um, he he hated it. He was just miserable. Yeah. Um, there was uh, we went to a, a local hockey game. Uh, there was a fight though, so that was pretty exciting. Yeah, the fight was sick. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, Waffles wasn't. I don't know if he was aware or it's just been so long since you've been to a hockey game. But every time someone got like checked into the, the freaking boards you were like cringing and yes it looked like it hurt <laughs> it, has been, <laughs> it, it has been uh i told students 19 years since i have witnessed uh, any kind of hockey game so to send the watch people get checked into the wall or to fight or to fall it was like ah, ah, ah like <laughs> those poor kids man <laughs> <laughs> poor kids like, they were getting hurt but they got they got right back up and grabbed their usually they their got stick. right back up yeah, one kid did that. <laughs> yeah, and then Waffles was so bored that we started creating our own like. Uh, I was not bored. Movie. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Don't we were like coming up with an idea for a, a movie about a mascot, and yeah. um, because there was a mascot there who was uh, very rambunctious, like was assaulting children and throwing popcorn on people, yes. and <laughs> yeah, the popcorn thing. I also I told this. I think it was a work. He's I a plant. I don't like. Like costumed characters. Oh yeah, well, I was like, scared of them. That. I, they make me wildly uncomfortable. <laughs> my my entire life, 
when I was really little going to Disneyland, I did not like say hi to the costume characters. I did not like to talk to the costume characters. It's like, have you ever heard of the Uncanny Valley? Do you know what that is? Uh-uh, no. So it determines psychology we use for like when you write storyboards where uh-huh. all humans have this level of what they're willing to accept as fake. And the second it's a little bit too real, you hate it. For example, uh, why everybody loved Yoda as a puppet. And then once they CG'd Yoda, he was way less popular is because it was we, we were so used to him being a puppet that uh-huh. once he became a little bit too real, your brain makes it uncomfortable for you. Um, and so cartoon characters have always hit that like uncanny valley for me of like, mm-hmm. I don't like this. I don't think this is fun. This is weird to me. So the, the, this, this mascot was walking around. And I was like, please don't come anywhere near us. Please <laughs> just you keep to yourself. I'll keep to myself. But yeah, and waffles is like uh, Eminem when it comes to like uh, puppet dogs. Do you remember like? Do you remember Triumph oh, the Insult Triumph Comic the Insult Dog? Triumph Comic Dog, of course. At, yeah. Like the MTV movie, mu- and like Eminem's like, he nope, punched him, out. right? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I can't, he can't handle it. He punched puppet, him. Puppet dog, I'm out, dude. That's where I crossed. That's one of the biggest. The <laughs> one of the biggest fights Eminem has ever been in is with a puppet dog. <laughs> <laughs> I love Triumph the Insult Comic Dog. We watched that all the yeah. time growing up. He was great. Specials. Yeah, so good. Um, yep. But yes, yeah, Stooge and I, we we went and we did some some masculine sport things, and we went to the yeah. sports. We went to the sports. Before great. we did the sports, we did the pizza, snowmobile pizza, awesome snowmobile pizza, pizza in Salt Lake City. It's the best. Yeah, check it out. If you're ever here, you got to go there. It's really good. So good. Uh, and let, me tell, good... let me just say some real quick. Though. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Stooge's pizza standards are very high, and in and Stooge's lived here in Utah for two years now. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he has yet to find a pizza place that he thinks is like good enough for him until we tried snowmobile pizza. And then he was like, okay, I found this it. is my place. Yeah. This is my place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, so, I, I eat whatever. So I was like, every pizza place we tried, like, oh, it's great. You'll love it. He's like, mm-hmm. eh. yeah. no, but no. Uh, snowmobile pizza rules. Snowmobile is awesome. It's a New York style uh, thin crust pizza uh, and it's cooked like in an actual oven and everything. It doesn't just go on like that. Uh, Conveyor what do you call those? Yeah. The conveyor belt. There you go. Yep. So it's 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 amazing. Um, it's the best pizza I've had since Grimaldi's, uh, which is saying a lot because Grimaldi's is amazing. Uh, yeah, pizza. It's also built. it's got a great theme. Like it's yeah, themed like, after snowmobiles and like '80s stuff, and it's so fun. yeah. It's like if a if a, a ski resort kind of no, I shouldn't say ski resort, but like a ski lift met. Yeah. 80s the 80s you know yeah. <laughs> like it is like, it's like a ski movie like, from the 80s yeah what is the what is that called the ski lift the thing ski, that takes yeah, people so up? The, the benches you sit at are old ski or, lifts yeah. yeah so that's really cool yeah. um and but then they've got like uh, a couple tvs and they're always showing like 80s music videos and it's there's like a couple fun. old uh, arcade things in there and so yeah it's 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 a great vibe it is it's a great yeah. vibe and it's got delicious pizza so and hey so you can't go wrong no, you can't. Either so way, we got the pizza, we got the hockey, we had a good night. Yep. I also dragged uh, waffles around the cold streets of Salt Lake City for a grand a photo op. <laughs> for a photo op, yes. <laughs> hey, man, we're we're both Instagram. Froze our buns we off. We understand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yep. We've all Anyways. done ridiculous things in the name of Instagram. We've all done. I'm going to credit when I post that picture. I'm going to credit you too. I'm going to put like the picture Thanks, emoji, the I'm photo credit. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. that's mm-hmm. great. And so it's funny too, is I had Waffle stand in as my model to take the picture so I could show him exactly how I wanted it because I'm so particular. He is, he is particular, gang. <laughs> this was like working with Andy Warhol. Like he knew what he wanted, and I just had to fulfill the dream mm-hmm. in in ten degree weather. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was oh gee, super that's, cold. Probably colder than that. Yeah. Oh, it was awful. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh, Utah. All right. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about music though, and talk about records, let's... so that people keep actually listening to our podcast. Oh, you think they're still listening? <laughs> no, I, th- I think they've given up. <laughs> Even my dad's clicked away. Uh, I mean, we're drawing on the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been a long year. Um, I don't know about you. I don't know what kind of year you've had, but it's been a year, and there has been music that has come out this year. And since it's at the end of the year. And by the way, we're not doing a show next week. We're taking we're taking the, the week off. Uh, heads for, up, everybody! Yeah, for Christmas. Not that everyone's like, "Oh no, what am I going to do?" <laughs> I can't, I'm yeah. not going to have any dead wax. Anyways, um, 
we, so we decided since it's our last, it's technically our last show of the year because the next one won't come out till till twenty twenty three. Yeah, yeah, till twenty twenty three. So Dang. we've we've got to do our end of the year top ten albums show, which is what Wee! we're doing today. Yep. So I like that. We we we. You know, I'm getting a stream deck uh, for Christmas. Okay. And I'm going to get like flamethrowers and stuff set up back here and like lights and smoke and stuff. Yeah. We'll, we'll make this a production. So that way, that way when, you, <laughs> when you intro trivia, it's like your WWE walkout. There's like yeah, yeah. cannons going off and lights and yeah. I'm going to get like, uh, I, I can also make it like a soundboard. Oh, cool. And we'll have like, you know, the, uh, the air horn and a bunch yeah. of other cool, cool sound effects. We'll see. Whenever, if I can whenever get that you done. talk about the white stripes, it's just like, the blackies, the blackies. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So like Stu said, uh, this is a thing that a lot of music nerds do, especially on the internet these days. You make a list of your favorite albums of the year. Shockingly, we both did this. So uh, if you've been following us on social media, we've been talking a lot about it, and we're going to talk about it today. So we're going to do our top 10 of 2022, the best albums that we love the most. Yes. I haven't actually say, done any top 10 thing at all on the internet yet. What? Yeah, I was waiting for the show. Dude, I'll um, on the show first, and then I'll do it, because I've actually got like a top 20. So yeah, there's, I've been doing mine. Good stuff they got this year. I've been doing mine. So those watching, yeah, pay attention to my social media, you're about to have it spoiled. Oh wow, sneak peek, spoiled. Pulling back the curtain. <laughs> I love that. Anyways, I love the demonstration of pulling back the curtain. Should we uh, stop from start from stop from start from ten and work our way up to number one? Yeah, so why do we each do like ten and then ten, ten, another, yeah, nine, exactly. nine, eight, 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 eight? Should we reveal them at the same time? <laughs> Should we try to guess? Because I'll never get any of yours. I'll never get number any one. Of I, I get number one. I read your list. And I don't know if I can tell you like that. I, I get number one. That's yeah. right. I did show you my list last time. No, nah, let's, <laughs> let's not do it at the same time. Okay. So you, you, you want me to go first? Off, start us off. Yeah. Okay. I'll start us off. So I thought I had my list finalized, but as I was picking up my records this morning uh, or today, you I was like, you know it? what? I've kind of switched up a little, just a little bit. Because I, when I really thought about it, I'm like, how much should I listen to these? You know, versus yeah. how much I really like them. So uh, my first one here. Is uh, it is the car by Arctic Monkeys. Ooh. So I'm not even a huge Arctic Monkeys fan. Yes, which is kind of surprising because they're kind of in the same vein as like all your alternative bands. rock yeah. that I listen to a lot. Seriously. Yeah, um, and like I'll listen to the the Arctic Monkeys like if they come on the radio and everything, but I don't like them enough to where I've owned anything of theirs Fair. on vinyl. Fair. And what's weird is compared to what other music they've put out the car is actually kind of a departure from their traditional sound that's uh more stripped down and i shouldn't even say stripped down because it's got different elements to it it's more uh when you think arctic monkeys it's a little more grungy fast place mm -hmm. rock this is definitely more like in a like a radiohead vein Ooh, i would say yeah. so uh when it comes to like the tone it's slower more serious more dramatic um and it's also what I love about it is they incorporated a lot of uh, traditional instruments into it. And by that, I mean, like, you know, there's like violins and different horns and stuff like that. Yep. And I really love when a band will do that and then execute it well. And so I, uh, I felt like this one just had a gravity to it that just really resonated with me, especially, you know, with my seasonal depression. So... Uh, that's my number 10 of the year. This is one Love I it. surprisingly listen to a lot. And so I picked it up and it's also, it's on this nice mustard, Ooh. which mustard sucks, by the way. I'll die on that hill. Uh, yeah. You got, mustard, a lot of yellow. Nerve. you got a lot of nerve to say something like I that on this podcast. A lot of nerve. Freaking son of a gun. So if yeah, if you, I, I'm going to, you know, we're, I'm assuming we're going to make uh, a playlist. Of course. With like a song. So I don't really have to plug this, but, um, yeah, look for a playlist, and I'll and I'll, I'll pick a song, my song off this album that I really like the best. So, I love it. That's my number ten, bro. Nice, Arctic my, Monkey. My number ten actually is a mild shout out to Stooge because it's his hometown. Oh shoot, <sighs> I just dropped all my records. Uh, sorry, I hadn't like leaning up. You and dropped now, them all. I know they were leaning there, up, there. and now they all fell. And that record is Forty Ounces to Fresno by Joyce Manor. Shut the uh, hell up. Are you serious? Oh, yeah, of course. 40 Ounces to Fresno. Great album. <laughs> That's uh, a, what, what's the band called again? Joyce Manor. Where are they from? I don't know. East Coast somewhere? 
Maybe West Coast. Alexa, where's Joyce Manor from? Joyce Manor formed in Torrance, California. Torrance. In States in November where's Torrance? I think it's down south. Or oh. maybe it's up in the Bay. I can't remember. I don't know where Torrance is. But yeah, Joyce Manor. Sure. Fantastic band. They're a pop punk, like emo band. Um, but what's great about Joyce Manor is most of their songs are like a minute and a half long. They're, like, they're like really short songs. So this record is one of the highest quality records of the year, and it's only 18 minutes long, the whole album is. A minute and a half is all you need if you know what you're doing. Huh? Oh, Awful dear Lord. <laughs> dear Lord. Um, <laughs> we're not even a few minutes into the whole album playlist, list, and uh, it's already to the point. This is just on a uh, Coke bottle green, but if you can you can kind of see it. There's an etching on one side. I do see it. Yeah. yeah, it's really cool. Anyway, Joyce Manor. Uh, I've known about Joyce Manor, I'm going to say, since 2011, but I really have not been a fan until this year. Uh, when I saw them live, they opened for the story so far, and it was phenomenal. I loved it. And I was like, I don't know why I don't listen to them more. I even had like two of their albums. I just was like casual. Anyway, became obsessed. Now they're a big favorite. And uh, this album is I'm a big fan of because it's, it's fun. It's happy. It's upbeat. Joyce Manor is not like a depressing emo band. They're more like mm -hmm. an upbeat, fun, emotional band. So they sing about getting pizza and stuff. Let's sing about getting pizza and stuff. All the good stuff, especially in Fresno. <laughs> Forty uh, ounces to Fresno. 40 That's a great Fresno. album title. I love right? it. Right, I love it. Uh, <laughs> but highly recommend Joyce Manor if you love short music and if you love like upbeat, fun emo. So there you go. That's my number ten as well. All right, give us your number nine, my friend. Number nine. My number nine. Ba -ba -ba, the mm. Sacred Souls. Ooh. So. This is their debut album. I would never heard of them until this year. Uh, oh. I don't know if it's just me getting older, but this year especially, and maybe it's because of record collecting, I'm really starting to get into like soul oh, and okay. R&B type music, you know, that's kind of uh, getting onto the fringes. I'm not jazzy, but you know, just, you know, just that a traditional kind of 70s soul, which is what these, these guys have that sound down. Yeah. So if you like anything from the 70s soul era, like, I don't know, Marvin Gaye, Al Green, uh, I don't know a whole lot, so I don't know. I can't name a whole lot of other artists outside of that. But if you're if you love that music, you've got to check out uh, the Sacred Soul. I think they're part of what's called the Neo Soul Revival, Ooh. where like they're bringing back okay. that type of style. Yeah, um, I love revival. It's just stuff. really it's it's really great music. It's got um, my favorite one off here is uh, Easier Said Than Done, Ooh. and it's a really great song about like uh just how you know with love uh it's 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 easier said than done on certain things like not worrying about the future talking yep. about your feelings and, and anyways it's 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 i don't know i just really enjoyed this album and was surprised when i put it on just how much it resonated with me so yeah. uh if you're if you want to dip your toes into soul i would even say this too because the sound is great too um so the sacred soul uh i got the uh played room exclusive which comes ooh, on this ooh, yellow ooh, that's pretty with a red splatter yeah that's really so, pretty dude i really like it. It's, it it's it's one of my favorites so uh um, that's rad of the year so i i if you haven't listened to them uh please check them out it's 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 these great music to put souls. on in the background yeah these sacred souls like if you want to dance with your partner in the living room you know put this stuff on and look at that that kind of stuff you know yeah so we love good anyways. vibes good vibe music good vibe music uh, my number nine um, could be considered the most opposite of Stooges' number nine. The okay. most opposite. And that is, It Is Time to Rise from the Grave by Undeath. Uh, mm. This is still sealed. I haven't opened it yet because I'm waiting for Christmas. So, I don't like the Undeath. Sorry, everybody. Sorry, everybody. Uh, it's still sealed. You can't see the variant. But it's a, it's a Rochester lilac. So I'm guessing purple. <laughs> 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 I don't know why I can't just say it's purple, but uh, Rochester. Maybe it's something else. I don't know. We're gonna find out on Christmas. Anyway, uh, Undeath is one of my favorite, if not my favorite, death metal band. Um, and it's time to rest from the grave. Is their second album phenomenal? Death metal of any genre I listen to, it can be very like the most hard to stand out because it all sounds the same. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of, but Undeath have a very distinct style that like works really well for them. What are you gonna say? It's like uh, that Ace Ventura scene where they go. Oh, the cannibal corpse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is Absolutely. that who that was? Uh-huh. I just love it. He goes in there. He's like, yes. like he's dancing. <laughs> then when he gets <laughs> on stage. Stupid scene. Yeah, Anyways. Fun fact, Ace Ventura, that, that movie was so huge for Cannibal Corpse to become the most famous death metal band of all time. Oh, because, really? That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, Like, it was got huge so for them. Because mm -hmm. that, that was still with their first singer. So it was only like their, I think, second album had come out. No, third album when they filmed that. And uh, the... That they made that movie, and then people to this Blew day up. 
will still say, I got into Cannibal Corpse and Death Metal because of Ace Ventura. So, fun nice. fact, share the friend. Anyway, um, It's Time to Rise from the Grave had a bunch of great songs on it, my favorite being Human Chandelier. Uh, but Undeath, I'm a very big fan. You guys know this, I talk about it all the time. And uh, they're really nice guys. They look intimidating on the picture, but they're really, really nice. They're super nice. When I've the met sleeveless them, guy a little friendly. bit. Oh, he's, he's, look... he's adorable, the sleepless guy. <laughs> Super nice. He looks anyway, like he's flexing on you. There you go. He's sick of these, yeah, I wore sick of these living I... people. I gotta show off the guns. I got no sleeves. It's actually really hard for me to pick a favorite song off this album. Um, so my favorite is just for anybody listening. Fiend for Corpses, Head Splattered in Seven Ways, and Human Chandelier. <laughs> nice. Fire jams. <laughs> if, you, if you're looking for some death metal that is extra brutal... But also not the same thing, different day on death. Cool beans, bro. The beans are cool, my friend. All right. So this next one, my number eight, I'm kind of cheating a little bit, just so you know. Okay. But I think it'll be okay. So originally, is it the my Sacred number... Souls again? No. <laughs> yeah, they're number seven. They're number, they're nine number seven through, six. through four. <laughs> nine through six. Um, so uh, this band released two albums this year, two great albums. Uh, and I was originally just going to go with this one, <gasps> Unlimited Love, because I liked it better than the other okay. one, which is Return of the Dream Canteen. Ooh. But I figured, you know what? There's, they're really similar in sound, in my opinion, and they both got a lot of great songs on it. They're yeah. both double LPs. Dude, yeah. they put out like 40 new songs this which year. Which is right? crazy. Peppers. Yeah. And I saw them live, too, which was an awesome yes, concert, despite having the, the most nosebleed <laughs> seats I'd ever I, It was like a K2 <laughs> challenge getting up to my seats. Um... <laughs> So uh, I like both of these a lot. Um, I think my favorite one off of Unlimited Love is Black Summer, but that's just the single too, so I'm super nice. boring, sorry. Uh, but both of these uh, came on. This one is Return to the Dream Canteen, comes on like a gold. Yeah. And then this one is just on an orange neon Ooh, that was for Unlimited cool. Love. I got to give a shout out to Graywell on this one too, because they hooked it up. I went in there, answered some, they had a contest to win a free one. That's right. I just had to answer a few questions about the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and I got them right, got and I won it. Free? free? Look at you. Happy. Free 90. So, free, brother. Those are my number eight. Sorry if it's cheating. Love but it. Like I said, they're very similar. It's not this cheating honestly could have been one mega album, but yeah. whatever. They Ultra did album. Yeah. That's rad, though. So, yeah, that's my number eight, brother. My number eight is God's Country by Chat Pile. Uh, Chat Pile, I just discovered this year. They haven't been around very long. This is their official debut album. Um, but my buddy Carson Pace messaged me and said, I need you to listen to this song. It's called Why. So I listened to it. and Were you like, why? That's funny. Um, Chat Pile's style is very out there. I'm going to be honest. It's out there. Because it's a mix. It's a lot like, coming from Waffles. Right. It's out there. <laughs> um, it's very like experimental, noisy. But uh, the vocals are done in both a mix of spoken word and screaming. Oh, and so spoken word. I love spoken word. Are you kidding? Oh, I thought that's why you didn't like Cobo Johnson. I just don't like Cobo Johnson. I'm sorry. Um, oh. uh, but like spoken word done this way, it like got in my head. How does he like, sound I, like? The singer for Chat Pile. Mm -hmm. What he's doing spoken word. Is um, he like in the song? He like, why he goes? Why do people have to live outside when it's the cold and the rain? It's not fair. I've never had to live outside. I've never had to push everything I own in a car. It's great. <laughs> What's that song about? <laughs> Capitalism? <laughs> Three minutes. Um, but yeah, God's Country, like every song is like that. <laughs> it's, and, it, and they also, but they mess around a lot with instrumentals because it goes from really like chuggy, chuggy, really distorted, Choo -choo. fuzzy sounding to just like really soft and like, like atmospheric. So this album was everywhere and I could not stop listening to it. I had it on a loop going like, when it came out. Um, then I got the vinyl. It was just standard black. Sorry, everybody. Not, not Why do people live outside? Dude, I, I will send it to you, and you'll go, that's exactly what it sounds like. And do, you, do, you remember, do you remember the comedian Bobcat Goldthwait? Never heard of him. Oh, okay, okay. Never mind then. He's in, Scro he's in uh, Scrooge. Bobcat? Yeah, Bobcat Goldthwait. Yeah. I love that name. He was in Scrooge. You see Scrooge with Bill Murray? I, a long time. It's been a minute. Oh, okay, okay. It's been a minute. He's, he was a comedian in the 80s. He had a very distinct way of talking, and in Scrooge, he plays the assistant that gets fired, and he's like, but why'd you have to fire me? Yeah. Like, I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, but he sounds that, like that. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if, if Bobcat was in a hardcore band, it'd be Chat Pile. Uh, anyway, was he I, in an episode of that 70s show? He like, absolutely was. 
I know, I know exactly yeah, what you're talking yeah, yeah. about. He has, one of he, you, hi. he has a yeah, very yeah. distinctive way of talking. Yeah. Um, I see Chat Pile next year for the first time. They're playing Lingua Ignota in Salt Lake, and I am very excited. Okay. But that is that is my number eight. Cool, cool beans, God bro. Country. Well, my number seven is another artist I never really listened to. Oh yeah, Ooh. I should have done the seven. Uh, until this year. He is an easy eye sound artist. So, you know, we that's, were kind of my we that's Dan, yep. that's Dan Arbach's uh, label. Uh, I didn't really hear much about this album coming out. Uh, and then like it was released. Graywell posted something about it. I saw it was a third, an easy eye sound. And I was like, oh, I'll check it out. Absolutely fell in love. Same day, went there and purchased this album from nice. Graywell. That's the best. It is Young Blood yes. by Marcus King. And if you love 70s classic rock Americana music. This is your record. You Heck need yeah. to go check this out. Um, it is just got riffs for days along with some really great solos throughout the songs. Um, I absolutely love this album. Uh, that's that's kind of what I would say about it in a nutshell. Nice. Um, some of my favorite ones, uh, songs in this album are Lie, Lie, Lie. And there's another one called Pain. But honestly, I, you can play this front to back and every single song is a freaking jam. I, I Honestly, the band it reminds me most of is um, Mountain, right? Is that what they're called? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ban Who sings uh, Bam Bam Betty? Bam Bam Betty? I don't is that know. Mountain? Or, or is it Black Betty? I can't remember. Oh, that sounds Damn, more familiar. I'm so I'm so terrible. I wish I had a phone or something. I, I'm okay. so bad on the spot. We trust, um, we trust and believe. I think it's maybe it's Black Betty. I can't remember. I'm so I bad. Know. But anyway, it sounds like Mountain. That's what that's what reminds me of a lot. So uh definitely check out uh if you like Easy Eye Sound, if you like that style of uh 70s yep. classic rock, uh please check this out. Great album. And uh this one just came on Ooh, a pretty fancy uh, like neon yellow. So, I love that. You put yeah. a Marcus King song on the playlist one week, and I loved it. I listened to it yeah. like three times. It was great. There Ooh, he is. Ooh, there he is. There's the back of it, too. Oh, there's the back. All right. There's two sides to the story. Mm hmm Yes, there is. And know what I love about Easy Eye Sound is Sorry. kind of the retro style covers they, they yes. do for all of the records. I really do that love. a lot. I really love these. So, once again, like I said, a record cover, an album cover can do a lot to persuade me to purchase an album. So anyways, that is such a good transition into what my number seven is because this Ooh. album artwork is ridiculous. You Let's see this? it, brother. I'm ready for my it. My number seven is sweet tooth by mom jeans. That has butts on the cover. <laughs> They're like butts. I have to have it. Butts. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Y'all know this. I'm obsessed with mom jeans. Mom jeans is a cool. I think you say butts. <laughs> obsessed with butts too. I'm obsessed with. butts. This is basically just baby got back ten times. Um, baby got back. But yeah, the sweet tooth by mom jeans. Holy crap, is phenomenal. Mom jeans has been around actually for a long time. What they style are they again? They're pop like punk? Uh, pop punk or emo. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> They're more emo than pop punk, but that that kind of e thing. Are they emo pop? Sure. They're, e they're emo <laughs> punk. Yeah. Um, they're punk core. Anyway, uh, Mom Jeans has been around for a while, but they only have this is their third album. They haven't put out like a ton of music because all the members of Mom Jeans are also in other bands. And so it's a, it's a trying to constantly mix things up. Anyway, when Sweet Tooth came out, they had a couple singles that I was like, okay, this is really bomb. Classic Mom Jeans. This is going to be great. And then mm -hmm. I listened to the whole record and it was like, at first I was like, this isn't identical to the Mom Jeans I've known and loved. So I was like, I don't know. And then I kept listening to it, kept listening. I was like, this is the best thing I've ever heard in my life. I like could not get enough of it. It's on a half and half, a little uh, half blue, half white. Oh, that's um, cool. I like yeah, that. It turned out super fun. So Mom Jeans, highly recommend. They're great for, uh, I, a great way to describe it is they're really upbeat, sad music. Because the music itself is really upbeat, fast and fun and exciting. The, the lyrics are very depressing. So I love it. I can't get enough of it. Uh, 10 Minutes is my favorite song from this one. And uh, highly recommend Mom Jeans to everybody because I think everybody, everybody can get into Mom Jeans. <coughs> Pardon me. I still, I still have not recovered from that cough, dude. Sucks. Yeah, that sucks. Maybe you should go see a doctor. No thanks. Continue Excuse on, me, oh doctor. Um, doctor. All right, number six. Six. Number six on my list is cheat codes. By Danger Ooh. Mouse and Black Thought. Yes. R.I.P. I believe Black Thought passed earlier this year. Yes. That's um, right. Awesome, awesome hip-hop album. If 
you like once again um like great lyrics black thought's a great lyricist yeah. uh and then also uh danger mouse did a great job of incorporating like once again almost like 70 soul elements into the beats that he made it just makes for like a really i don't, I don't know if classy is the word but you know soulful hip-hop album yeah. that it, it's just so great and i'm i the you know the first time i listened to this album it's like eh, it was all right and then i went back and gave it another listen and then the second time around just it just really clicked with me yeah. and so um i'm like all right i have to get this on on uh vinyl so some of the the features on this they've got raekwon uh they got joy badass mf dooms on here nice. asap rocky run the jewels so you know mm. quite a bunch it's of like everybody you know, yeah a, a good collection of you know features on this as well so if you're looking for some good hip-hop stuff and you haven't checked this out already you got to definitely check out cheat codes by danger mouse and black dot and i got the uh Ooh, red one color variant yeah love so, it yeah really great hip-hop album that's one that's another one you've put on the playlist i listened to it without really enjoyed yep that's a good it's a good album good work dude thank you sir uh, what's your num number six my number six we're taking it back to the emo because i can't get enough Taking it is back. The self titled Prince Daddy and the Hype. That is record. scary as hell. That right. little, super is scary. that a kid or is that a doll? What the hell is that? I, I think it's a kid, like dressed as a clown, but the, the picture is like hyper exposed, so it's very creepy looking. Hyper exposed and the contrast is turned up to 11. So exactly. It's all, yeah. yeah. Can't even see if the kid had eyes. It's like a soulless <laughs> yeah. killer it, it, clown. It really is like you can't see if there's eyes or not. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I'm obsessed with Prince Daddy and the Hyena. Fantastic band. Uh, I got obsessed with them because uh, our our buddy Ryan and I last December went and saw Hot Mulligan and Prince Daddy opened, and I I had heard of that band and I watched them. I was like, I'm sorry, this don't be my new personality. And so then uh, they came up with this album this year, and I think in like March, and I still play it regularly because it was just that good. Um, mm. The the thing about Prince Daddy is that most of the music is about the singer's struggles with mental health. He has been institutionalized for his mental health, and a lot of his music is about what that was like. And so it is very deep, but it is really well done uh the song in just one piece is my favorite a lot of there's a lot of great ones on here and just one piece is a favorite and uh prince daddy and the hyena another one similar to mom jeans i'm unaware of anybody that would like not love this it's very like relaxing kind of sad kind of depressing but fun at the same time so highly recommend prince daddy and the hyena to everybody that likes to cry at taco bell parking lots <laughs> so that's me that's me that's me that is waffles. Mm -hmm. All right, halfway All right. through. We're halfway we are through. cracking the top five yeah. here now. This is a big deal. Yep, it is a big deal. This is a very big deal. All right, my number five, sticking with the hip hop here. Okay, we're going vinyl days yes. by Logic. That's his Had to be kiddo there on the cover. Had to do it. Um, yeah, man, Logic. He never misses it with me in his albums. Um, this one's got thirty nine tracks on it too. Look at that. Holy 39. cow! Yeah, it's got a lot. You know, a lot of them are kind of shorter. Uh, yeah. but definitely my favorite one is Tetris. It's a freaking banger. If you, if you ever want to sample this, um, make sure you check that part out. What I love about this album too, is he reached out to a bunch of like, uh, different celebrities that he likes and like oh, asked really? them to like call into him and leave some kind of message yeah. so he could add it to the album. So they That's got like, cool. I love that. he got like, um, Michael Rappaport to do one, you know, and really? Michael, and Michael Rappaport's like, Hey, Logic, you want me to do this thing? I'm not doing this. It's stupid. You're stupid. Logic, <laughs> whatever your name is now. Just, you know, typical yeah. Michael Rapport. Just yeah. out. Um, who's the dude that plays Dwight Schrute? I can't remember. Rain his. Wilson. Rain, Rain Wilson. I was about to yeah. say Rain Johnson. I'm like, no, he's a director. Uh, <laughs> Rain Wilson does one too. And uh, That's right. Anyway, you know, he's got some funny, some funny things on here. And then uh, he's also got a baseball player, uh, Aaron Judge, who actually played at Fresno State. Oh, uh, I left him a message on this too, so that's kind of cool. But anyways, that's way cool. Um, Logic always freaking kills it, in my opinion. Uh, great lyricist. Uh, he's got his, his ability, his like his flow, his cadence, his ability to you know he's make great. words come out of his mouth. He's he's a he's a, a true master at that craft. So yeah, uh, yeah. If you're looking for more hip hop, check out Vinyl Days by Logic. One thing that was weird about this album is when it came out this year, it wasn't available on vinyl immediately it, That's it, it was hilarious vinyl it days is not available on vinyl it was, yeah it came out yeah. like i don't know april or something and it, yeah. this didn't come out on vinyl until like october so yeah that's funny that, that was kind of funny so but anyways finally got that on vinyl courtesy of yeah. rustic records <laughs> that is so sick so stooge if someone were to go to rustic records <laughs> for you know other perhaps another company of vinyl days 
What would you yeah, do? yeah. If you're going to get some logic, by the way, there's like a discounted logic. The original uh, uh, "Under Pressure" his his OG album, his very first one, the um, deluxe edition too. There's a copy still available on rusticrecords.com right now for fifteen dollars. And if you want to save five percent on top of that, go discount get it. Coach dude. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Everybody listening. I paid like 35 bucks for my copy, you know, at Seriously. some record store. And that's just like sitting there. I, it, it baffles my mind. But uh, yeah, if you're looking to get, if you're looking to get your feet wet with logic on vinyl, go to rustic records online.com right now and pick up that last copy. I think it's still there. It's been a minute since I've checked the inventory, but yeah, it's, uh, it's in the discount vinyl section if it's still there. So it's like 15 bucks. And what's even more mind boggling is that Brian ran a sale during Black Friday where you got an additional five off everything that was clearance marked down. So it would have been ten dollars. Yeah. Anyways. See? So that's just that's just me. Anyway. Love it. We love Rustic. I love Records. Logic. Yeah. Yes, we do. And love Logic. Logic. I love I love Rustic Records as well. Yeah. See, there you go. So uh my number five, I do not have the vinyl for. <gasps> I know the the cringe. So imagine I'm holding it. Um my number five is the record? Self, the self-titled <laughs> Dr. Acula album. Dr. Acula being a favorite from when I was 16. Uh, they have not put out new music since 2011. Oh, and, it's uh, been a minute. Yeah, it's been a minute. Because they also had a wild amount of lineup changes, and they got back together with the original lineup to produce this new album. So it's really cool because it's like the original group that had that same creative drive, but now they put modern sensibility to it. So it's really, mm -hmm. really cool. They are dudes in their late 30s now, but they're putting out some of the best metal I've ever heard. Uh, Dr. Acula made them really cool back in the day. Was that they were a MySpace band? That's where I found them. And MySpace, uh, all of their songs, all of the good songs, at least from the good albums, they're the names of Goosebumps books. And That's so, awesome. and they brought that back for this new album. So the best songs on it were "Stay Out of the Basement," "The Scarecrow Walks at Midnight," "The Barking Ghost," uh, "How to Kill a Monster," "The Egg Monsters from Mars," uh, "Abominable Snowman of Pasadena," like "Apotheosis." That was a great song too. Freaking uh, R.L. Stein, brother. I know. So uh, when when they brought that that back, it was like, oh. We've got real Dr. Acula back now because they're doing Goosebumps titles. Anyway, I was lucky enough to be reached up by Dr. Acula themselves. I got to hear the album early. And so when I told a few people like, hey, by the way, this will be one of the best records I've ever heard, you've ever heard in your life. They were like, okay, Chris, like, I get it. You like that band. You talk in hyperbole a lot. It's fine. Then it came out and I was like, I was right, wasn't I? And they're like, yes, it is fantastic. Uh, so I highly recommend if you like metal of any kind, Listen to Dr. Acula's new album. It is bomb. Especially the song Stay Out of the Basement. That was my favorite one. It Stay was like the basement. It was like it was like a corn inspired uh deathcore song. So it's rad. Oh, is there lots of ooh, rah, 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 on it? Yep. <laughs> and it's uh, their singer Rob, he's my buddy now, but he, that's his favorite song too. So he was really stoked that one came out. Cool beans. There you go, Dr. Acula. Cool beans, Dr. Acula. All right, number four. four. Number four, only four left. I know, can you believe? Uh, my number four wouldn't be a top 10 list without this person on it, without these guys on it, because they're my, one of my favorites of all time. Oh, there more hip hop. Zarmageddon by Heck Zarface. Yeah, uh, yeah. Love this album, man. I probably listen. I, I don't know if I did my rap or not, if I ever posted that. But this is like the t one of the top three albums I listened to all yeah. year. Just played it a lot nonstop. Um, and it's just great. It's, it's it, You can listen to it the whole way through. Everything, every song is like a banger. Uh, some of my favorite ones on this one, though, are um, Damien's Dinner Time, which is, once again, like the, the opening song. Um, they've got Bob uh, Bob Laxar. I don't know how you pronounce that, really. It's right there. Yeah. Anyways. Bob um, Lazar. Yeah. <laughs> But it's you know once again they got like a a Logan Five uh song once again incorporating their Mar Marvel stuff that they like to do but let's look at the back of this too man so sick. and this was an RSD release like a record store day oh, nice. so yeah. with this also came like trading cards that's and, right yeah. um if you if you collect them all like you could put them on the thing that's here so cool to display them uh there was also a like a lunchbox uh, yeah. cassette thing that came out as well on record store day that had more cards um i, I have it but it's, it's it's up displayed on the shelf you can't see it. it's just out of view um just something really fun that zarface yep. does and that's another thing i love about them is the little extras they do to put like you know the personal touch and the little extra <laughs> effort into their stuff so um yeah looking for a great hip-hop album and you love fun lyrics about you know marvel stuff but also like just good 
once again, good rhythm, good yeah. making the words come out the mouth with the yeah. cadence and everything like that. Once again, Zarface, you know, they got Inspector Deck from Wu-Tang in there, uh, Esoteric, and DJ7 all making the beats, and it's a, it's, they're a dynamic trio. Yeah. A trinamic trio. I don't know what you're A trinamic it. trio, he says. Trinamic trio. Love it. So, yeah. I love Trap. Zarface. There's no secret. Yeah, there's no secret. Oh, other it, way, you can kind of see him, right? Oh, dang, this inverted. That's them right there on my yeah. wall. Is there anybody else for my top 10 so far? Kind of. Back. No. Uh, oh, I, yeah, I'm, kind of. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. A couple of them make you it know, You know what I'm talking about. Spoilers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. uh, as like the emo hardcore kid from the show, even I like Zarface. Zarface is so fun. So, mm -hmm. great answer. Uh, my number four is, once again, I don't have on vinyl yet. It is on its way. It should be here like tomorrow, but sadly we didn't make it in time. So, tomorrow. Single tier. And that mm -hmm. is Canary Yellow by Soft Kill. Soft uh, Kill. Where's the blanket? Soft Kill record. Um, it's over there. Soft Kill. Um. They're the best band in the world. Uh, Soft Kill is a goth rock band, if you guys don't know. I talk about them a lot. Uh, very like, like sad boys, slow jams, but so beautifully written. Um, and the new Soft Kill uh, Do you just call but, them sad boy slow jams? That's what they are. <laughs> that's, <laughs> awesome. that's, what, that's totally what Soft Kill is. It's not, they're, not like, they're not like a fast band. They're not like a punk hard or anything like that. It is like the cure in the modern day, and I just love it so much. Uh, He's here for what's it. What's crazy about Soft Kill is that Soft Kill, um, after the last album, Dead Kids Rip City, uh, they became a completely independent band. So they don't have a record label. They don't have management. They don't have a merch company. They do everything themselves. And it is very difficult for them to do stuff because they do it by themselves, but they get all of the money from it. So oh, nice. it, it, is, it is a tough thing to hear about what their lives are like now, um, especially with touring. In fact, they've even planned on canceling touring just forever because they have, to, they have to book all the shows themselves and they all have kids. So they're all oh, like, it's, it's really hard for us to do all the work and then not even be with our families. So Canary Yellow came out and it is the best soft kill album. I'll say it, happily say it. It is fantastic very very great songs beautifully written um the singer his voice is so like haunting that it just works so well over the the slow jams it's so, like a ghost it's like a ghost but yeah canary yellow I'm, I'm very excited to finally have it on vinyl mine if you can imagine it will just be blue it's just blue they they mm. did like they did like eight just normal colors you know blue yellow pink and then like one had a splatter and that splatter was gone in seconds when, when it was seconds, up. So gone. It was seconds, because I tried to get it. It was gone in seconds. So, anyway. mm -hmm. But yeah. yeah, Soft Kill is my number four. Woo! -hoo. Number four, mm -hmm. Soft Kill. Love Canary Soft Island? Kill. What was it called? Canary Yellow. Canary Yellow. Makes more sense. Canary All Island. All right. <laughs> Isn't there a Canary I'd, Island? I'd go there. I'd go to Canary <laughs> Island. Yeah, why not? Um, all right. My number three, which is probably going to come to a shock as a shock to some people. To everybody. Yeah. Yes. My number three album this year. Dropout Boogie Ooh. by the Black Keys. I bet everyone was expecting this to be my number one uh, because I am such a huge Black Keys fan. Look at this pressing. Ooh, Look at that. pretty. Yeah. yeah, it's got that pink with the, like, I don't know if that's purple or blue mixed in with it, but it looks yeah, good. It looks great, though. Um, Dropout Boogie, super fun album. Um, I will admit there's some songs on here where it's like, oh, yeah, they made that one for a commercial. Uh, <laughs> there's about, there, there's literally a song on here called your team is looking good and the first time i've heard it i'm like oh yeah this is definitely gonna be used on like promo football promo commercials yeah, and stuff yeah. like that good for them um so yeah you gotta make you gotta make your money where you can gotta make so, that green yeah. um but it's just you know your 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 quintessential black keys album which i love about it it's just it's it's i don't want to say simple is the word but you know it is it's like guitars drums yep. and um but you know Every once in a while, Dan Arbach busts out a, a wicked sweet guitar solo, yeah. and he's he's got that crunchy, fuzzy guitar that I love. Um, and the music just speaks to me. You know, it's got a good rhythm, and um, I just put this on anytime and thoroughly enjoy it. So, uh, and these guys are hilarious. Like a lot of the promo stuff they, they did for this, uh, so good. What was it called? Uh, dads interested in choosing their kids' music yep. or dicks, you know? Like yep. they're like against the blackies. They did like the uh, the court hearing promos where people will come in to like this fake court and like they're complaining about why people should listen to black keys and how they're bad for their kids. Yep. Um, anyways, it's just good good marketing. It's it's fun. Hey man, they're stuff, hilarious. So, so yeah, uh, drop a boogie. I, I I saw the black keys three times this 
this year. Yes, you did. So um, I thought like it was more than three. That's funny. It's only three. Yeah, it's only three. I was trying to. I, I tried to go four, but uh, that's right. The fourth one off. So. That's right. Anyway. Dang it. Next year, next year, you'll see him four. Yeah, yeah. Next yeah. year, four for sure. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that's my number three. Drop on love it, dude. Black East. Oh, favorite song is Wild Child. The single Ooh, once again, Child. but it's so good. Wow, great song. Dun, I, 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 dun, 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 dun. Anyways, all right. At the very end of this, we should go through all the ones we listened to. How many we saw this year? Because I feel like okay. we've seen we've seen a lot of our top tens. Uh, my number three is Rouge Carpet Disaster by Static Dress. Ooh, oh my dress. gosh, do I love this album. Uh, same it. thing, my, my Spotify wrath was ruined by this. It's all I freaking listen to. Um, and the pressing's really pretty. It's like a black and white smash. Oh yeah, it is a smash. It turned out really, smash. really good. Um, they only made a few of these too. They had this ship from the UK, so it's not cheap. Um, Ooh, not at they all. They, have, they haven't done an American press of it yet. International shipping is not... You're paying as much as you are for the record. Seriously, the especially, especially from the UK because they, they did the Brexit thing, so it's even more money. So like it Brexit. Oh, yeah. way to go, Brexit. Anyway, Rouge Carpet Disaster is one of the best albums I've ever heard. Uh, I've been a fan of Static Dress since the first song. I will praise. flex that. Say again. I said, "Damn, that's a that's a that's a high, high praise, praise saying it's the best album ever." It is the best album ever. It's better than Abbey Road. Um, but yeah, like I've been a fan of Static Dress since their first song because it just came on as like a new featured artist. They had one song up, and I was obsessed. So then when they came out with their debut album. It was a very big deal. Uh, I finally got to see Static Dress this year because I came to the U.S. for the first time just a month ago, and it was mind blowing. Um, the thing that's fun about Static Dress is that they have this sort of like uh, revival sound to post hardcore bands in the 2000s. Mm -hmm. So it sounds a lot like like from first to last and um, stuff like that from 15 years ago. But they mix it into a modern style, and it really like pumps up the intensity. So it's it's, a, it's sometimes they're screaming, sometimes it's really soft and sometimes it's happy. And so it, it kind of gives you everything you need. This is one of those albums variety. too. This is one of those albums too, that the second I know the last song's playing, I get pissed. Because I'm like, how did it go by so fast? Oh. Uh, that's what my wife says a lot too. Um, oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so would you say that, uh, uh, what's their, what, uh, what are they called again? I'm blanking Static on Dress. Static Dress. Would you say... That their album is like a box of chocolates. Because you never know what you're going to get. Yeah. There's just a whole I lot of variety that. in there, too. Yeah, I right. would say that. Uh, the opening song, Flea House, is now one of my all-time favorite songs. Fun fact. Flea House. Nice. Of all time. All time. Okay. That's my number three. Pew, pew. Man, we're, we're um, crunching down. We're at number two already. Yeah, number two already. Um, number two. Number two. And what's even funnier is that we have not had a single repeat or like we we both haven't had a single record that we like both overlap oh yeah 10. i would never have guessed we would have overlap either <laughs> yeah so <laughs> all right my number two of the year okay is an absolute banger and i like this album once again is just so awesome fear oh. of the dawn by jack white heck yeah third man records um if you're looking for that like traditional kind of white stripes jack white sound i mean it's it's, it's got white stripe foundation but whereas the white stripes is very basic and broke down but still amazing yeah. this is like jack white solo stuff is like hey i'm gonna try adding different elements of music into my music and see what happens yep. and you just get like a lot of energy you get that traditional jack white sound coming through really heavy in this one um absolutely love it taking me back is is my favorite it's just a jam i, I yeah. absolutely love that song um but i also like um heidi ho Okay. which is a standout on this album because it's the only song with a feature and it features Q-Tip oh, Q from A Tribe Called Quest, yeah. who is one of, who I regard as probably like the best, like, uh, I, I guess you would call it rapper. Mm -hmm. um, you know, lyrics, you know, I, I would have to d dive into it more, but just Q-Tip is so smooth when he yeah. raps, his, his cadence, his flow. He just, it just, is, uh, anyways, he's like his own instrument. The way the way yeah. he, he he performs. So, um, I saw this before it even came out. You know, there's going to be a song with Q-Tip. Like, what? How is that going to happen? And it's just great. He comes on and, and kills it, and it's just nice. a great song. So, uh, yeah, uh, "Fear of the Dawn" by Jack White. Great album. Uh, this one I've got on. I got the uh, Third Man Vault Ooh, exclusive color. She's beautiful. That comes on. Yeah, on this like a. Uh, Dark oh my with a little bit of I don't know what was it cloud in it, but yeah, it looks good. 
I like looks it. Looks great. Yeah. So it's hard to drink stuff like that. Holy cow. Mm-hmm. So there you go. That's my number two album. Number of the two. Year. Man, we're getting out down. the black keys. Seriously. Once again, I think I think the reason I chose this one over the over the black keys. Once again, like their album, like I said, it, it's like it's simple. It's like they got this formula they stick to. I love it. It's great. I really enjoy it. Yeah. But I felt like this album just had a little bit more to offer um, than than the Black Keys dropout buggy. So yeah. Anyways, there you go. Hey man, nothing yeah, wrong with on. that. Nothing wrong with that at all. Yep. My number two actually comes from my favorite artist, and that is Euthanasia by Stray from the Path. Straight so, from the past. This album came out this year, and oh my gosh, was it? Did it live up to all the hype? Because my gosh, is it so good? This is the Twitch exclusive. It's just purple. Um, but there's only a hundred of them. So nice. Uh, Tom from Straight told me that they were going to make uh, a Twitch a waffle like, exclusive. Exactly. So he's like, "Here's the <laughs> link. Make sure you get it because uh, it's going to go quick." And it did. So very glad to have it. But Youth in Asia. What's really cool is that Stray, being a very political band and very uh, open about their politics, they're they're not like nothing's a secret, nothing's like coded, nothing's like a secret message. It is all very like we hate cops, we hate <laughs> we hate political parties, we hate political leaders. Um, and Euthanasia had so many great songs on. For example, we hate um, armies, needful things, guillotine, chest candy, law abiding citizen, uh, the salt in your spit, neighborhood watch, uh, great songs. And then three uh, was on this album. It is part of a series of songs they've done throughout a few other albums called A Badge and a Bullet, which is an anti-cop song. Uh, but the first Badge and a Bullet is on the record Anonymous. Second Badge and a Bullet is on uh, Subliminal Criminals. And third Badge and a Bullet is on Euthanasia. So it was such a fun way to like see a, a progression of that one like topic through different songs. And then each song does a quick little throwback to the other two songs. So it's really fun. Anyway, they're my favorite Straight. band. And... and uh, you can't see it, gosh dang it. They also made an alternative cover that I have um, that was like a super exclusive one that I got from the band when I saw them. So, Oh, nice. Yeah, they gave me Is that, that the copy. one where they drew the color? No, that was somebody else. That was... That's y- young youth culture. Young culture. Dude, uh, young culture. Yeah, the, so this one, um, they have the... When I went to go see them with Devil Wears Prada, they had their album on vinyl before it came out, which is so rare. Oh, that's, okay, that's cool. So rare. They had it on tour. The day before they got to Salt Lake City, they sold out. And so I was really sad when I got to the merch table and they told me they didn't have any. Uh, or no, I'm sorry. Tom told me before I got there, the guitarist, that they had sold uh, out. And I was like, dang it, I was going to buy it. And he was like, I'm sorry, man. So I bought the CD because I still wanted to hear the album early. Anyway, he told me, uh, so they have an exclusive like alternative cover that's for their drummer's podcast. And they get the, the artwork for these is wild. In fact, I'll just show you. We're going on a trip. Uh, Ooh. Mobile waffle right there. So nice. Yeah. So this is like an alternative cover and uh, that's his dog. Um, his dog? A, that's the, the drummer's dog uh, oh. with a bunch of zombies. Anyway. So um, they had sold out of those and those had sold out online, the alternative cover. And he said, we have one that they gave the band that we made ourselves to see if it would work. You can buy that one if you want. And I was like, yes, yes. I want that one. So there yeah. You go. But anyway, I, I highly recommend euthanasia. If you like political music, if you like hardcore, if you like being angry, <laughs> uh, Euthanasia is the best of them all, man. So good. <laughs> That's going to be a sound cup. I highly recommend Euthanasia because you can take that out of context so hard. <laughs> I highly recommend Euthanasia for like a lot of things. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. Good work. <laughs> all right, dude. Number one. Numero uno Numero of the uno, year. The best album to you of the year. My favorite album of the year. I know best is the word I use. It's just the one that I enjoyed the most and the one that was just most meaningful to me. And I, I probably won't be a surprise because it hasn't come up yet, but uh, Entering Heaven Alive. There it is. By Jack White. And, there it is. you know, earlier earlier I included the Chili Peppers, both of theirs on one, because mm-hmm. I felt like they're pretty similar. If, if you know, if uh, Fear of the Dawn was the yin, this, this album's the yang of Jack oh, White albums this year. Yeah. They're like opposites. Like I said, in, in Fear of the Dawn, it, it brings a lot of the fuzz, the traditional Jack White, you know, whereas this one's a more stripped down version of Jack White. Mm. Uh, he doesn't have the crunchy guitar. He's got more of the acoustic sounds, um, like, you know, plucking songs on an acoustic guitar. And it's got yeah. more heart, whereas like Fear of the Dawn brings the party. This is the one that would be for like the sad boys. 
Yeah. Um, like he's got, he's got uh, my favorite, probably my favorite song of the year and probably my favorite Jack White song period now is called Love is Selfish. Yes. Um, where he just, you know, sings about uh, love and there's a line in it that I don't know, for whatever reason, it just really resonates me. But he says that he's got a name. Uh, sorry, he's got a name. <laughs> Well, I'm he glad said, he has a name. He's yeah. got a boat. He's got a boat with your. I've got a boat with your name painted on it, but I don't know how to sail. Like basically saying, oh, like, I yeah, like I've got I this that. boat. It's you. I love you. It's who. But I don't know how to do like love. Like I suck at it. You know. Yeah. And I just think it's such a really cool like line from the song. Absolutely. But just the whole tone is like very like I said mellow stripped down and uh if you want to have like maybe a cry this is an album i don't know if you get there but uh um, okay but because it is more meaningful in that way and that song love is selfish but they, they've got uh, there's a tip from you to me if i die tomorrow a lot more great songs on this like i said once again you can listen to the whole album and every single track is great um but uh, because it's got that more meaningful tone to me yeah. and i absolutely love that one song i i chose uh Entry Love Heaven it, Alive dude. over Fear of the Dawn. So cover's a little interesting, but I like it. Yeah. So um I like it a lot. Anyways, that's uh that's that's my album that's your of the year. One, that's my favorite year. one of the year. Yeah. So Love it, dude. Yeah, check it out. Um here, this one's on more of a Ooh, I love that. Like, clear with the uh with the blue way do I go. The yeah. blue cloudiness on it. Yep. That so. is so cool. Oh and what's even cool. Is I was in Nashville the the evening before this album was released. That's right. And huh? so I got to go to the Blue Room at yes. Third Man Records Nashville and listen to the album. Yeah. Um, like Jack didn't perform it; they just played it. You know, just over the speaker. Up, yeah. There's like people getting drinks and stuff like that. So I hung out for like I don't know about half the album, and then I ended up leaving because it was getting late. But um, yeah. yeah, that was re that was a really cool experience That's as well. So cool, and, dude. Oh, this. Oh, let me see if it's in here. It should be in here. Another, yes, it is. So a cool thing that they had there. Um, oh, geez, there's so many goodies in here. Just forgot. <laughs> so many goodies. But they had these at uh, oh, three hive, that's uh, the cool. three hive at the Blue Room. It's a hymnal. So it's it's a hymnal. Yeah. So that's like it's so got cool. every song. It's got the lyrics. And if you weren't there, like it's not like they were selling these or giving these out with the record. Yeah. But yeah, it was. It's just you know another cool thing that I have with my copy because I was there. So um, that yeah. is so sick, dude. Really cool, really cool thing to have. You know, it's nothing; I mean, it's paper, but it's it's but just, but it's cool. Yeah, and what yeah. a cool memory you can have with it. Yeah. So I always, yeah, have that memory. <laughs> I always have that memory. So sorry, I make all these weird voices. Hey, man, you know I love it. All right, Mister, mm -hmm. uh, what's your number one? I wonder what it could be. I wonder what it could be. <laughs> It's not like I've been telling everyone the whole episode. See, look at this. I've had this. I've had it ready to go the whole time. Mm. My number one album is Celebrity Therapist by the Callous Dow Boys. <laughs> uh, Celebrity Therapist is a masterpiece. Like, no, nothing short of it. Uh, because this album was really interesting for them to evolve past what they've been doing for years just as a math core band. They've now just, they, they are still math core, I guess, but like, They've gone way more experimental, and they're trying to make every song distinct and unique from one another. So on, on Celebrity Therapist, uh, they're able to accomplish... Oh, I don't have the song names on the back. I have them by heart, though. Uh, I've, I've listened to it a lot. <laughs> they're, they're like, they're right here! Yeah, seriously. <laughs> the, yeah, they, yeah, on my I tattooed on my <laughs> armpit. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Celebrity Pulled up Therapist. Pulled a shirt. <laughs> Celebrity Therapist really, like... It showed that the Callous Dow Boys... Uh, aren't just like this little underground band from Georgia that like plays a few shows here and there. They released this and it like was mind blowing how good it was. And the artwork's really cool. I love the artwork. Um, mm -hmm. anyway, it's like that Spider-Man meme kind of. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, but the thing that's fun about, uh, about celebrity therapist songs, like a brief article regarding time loops, um, uh, violent astrology, star baby title track. They, they're also wildly different from one another. But they still keep this like really fun sensibility. The thing about the Callous Dow Boys is they're always fun. They're a fun band. They like to be exciting and wild and crazy. And that is why I love them so much. Uh, they're, they're delightful people. And they, they've actually recorded this two years ago. And then we're not sure how to put it out with the pandemic. So they've been sitting on this incredible record for two years. Being like, we promise something good's going to happen soon. So just be waiting, everybody. 
Uh, and then when they finally put it out, they had to go through a lot of like lineup changes. So the people that recorded this album, like three of them aren't in the band anymore. And so oh, wow. it's like, Crazy. yeah. So it, uh, it was a lot of like stuff they had to go through personally, but then this come out and then it, they like knocked everyone's socks off, man. It's been so cool to see. And, and you guys know the this. Socks no came secret. Off. You guys know this is no secret. I love this band a lot and uh, they're my friends. And so it's really cool to be able to see how far it, this album only came out in September. So now we're three months ish, uh, how far just three months has taken them into more like mainstream of metal and more mainstream of hardcore stuff. So there you go. Celebrity therapist by the Callous Dow boys is my number one. Nice. Nice. Shocker. Um, dude, how much would you need to change your pants? If your favorite band asked you to like design a variant of their next, uh, upcoming album. I wouldn't just and they, change one pair of pants. All of my pants would be crapped. Um, uh, like, uh, all and of them. they would call it. They'd call it the waffles, the chicken and I waffles would variant. I lose my mind. <laughs> that would actually be a great topic if you could like do your own custom variants. Yeah, Dude, we should do that for a topic one day. Like your favorite, like four or five albums, and what your dream variant of each one would look like. Oh yeah, that's not a bad idea. Actually, interesting. Yeah, they'd be fun. Mm -hmm. uh, of the artists you listed in your top ten, which did you see live this year? Uh, actually, only like two of them. We saw Jack White together. Saw Jack I saw I saw the Black Keys, and okay. I think that's it. I think that the I... rest of them. Oh, Red Hot Chili Peppers! I lied. I saw that's the right. Chili Peppers, yep. and that's it. Yeah, so nice. four of them. I think I saw one, two, three, four. Nope. Nope. I think <laughs> I've only fine. seen like. <laughs> I think I've only seen six of mine. Only six. Yeah. Only six of them. Only six, maybe seven. Actually, let me count real fast: one, two, three, four, five, so six, slow. seven, seven. Sorry. Okay, I saw seven. There you go. I know. I didn't see Prince Daddy and the Hyena this year, or Doctor Acula. Doctor Acula is going to Utah. That's too bad. They'll They've have been to a band come. since two thousand and seven. They've never played in Utah. I know. Can you blame oh. them? No, I even like, I even, I was talking about it and I was like, they were like, we would love to come do a show to you. Where are you at? And I was like, Salt Lake city. And their singer was like, I've literally never been there. <laughs> so it's so whatever. Uh, did you tell them not to come in the winter? <laughs> I didn't. Cause I just want them to be here. So I'll trick them. Ugh, they'll trick never them. come back. Trick them into doing it. Um, so we don't, we don't have any trivia today because uh, that that took topic like took a while to get through. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we do want to end the episode with some mixtape questions because that's just a good way to put a bow on it. And also gives you a few songs for our playlist that are not the 20 songs we just went over, 20 artists. So, Stu, are you ready? I'm ready, my friend. Based on our experience yesterday on Snowmobile Pizza, what is the best song for an 80s aerobics class? Oh, definitely It's Raining Men. Ooh, that is honestly a great answer. Uh, they have an Arnold Schwarzenegger workout album, and that's one of the songs they use on there. No it's way. <laughs> Dude, we'll have to put that as the playlist, like the one from the Arnold Schwarzenegger playlist. Yeah, soundtrack. What about, what about who sings the song Maniac? Like the one that Farley I'm does? I'm a maniac, 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 that's for sure. Yeah, that's a, that's good a one great too. one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was going to say the Olivia Newton John, let's get physical. 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 Those are both, uh, those are, those are, we need to make a ones. playlist. We need, <laughs> need to do aerobics class. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds way fun. Or I Want to Dance yeah. with Somebody by Whitney Houston. But I feel like I use that song for every prompt we've done, so I won't say that one. <laughs> okay, you ready? Yeah, I'm best, ready. Best song for a 4th of July barbecue. Uh, Anything by CRR, Credence, oh wait, CCR, CRR, CRR, <laughs> Credence, Rear Water Revival, <laughs> Rear, Rear Water, <laughs> Rear Water, uh, that sounds like a waffle we've, Friday we've night, all had the rear water. <laughs> 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 we're the same person, that is so funny, oh my um, gosh, yeah, any Credence, specific song by CCR, uh, let's do uh, Unfortunate Son, because oh, then song. it's a, it's a jam, and you educate yourself, <laughs> Anyways. You learn about Vietnam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to pick Raining, Raining Blood by Slayer. Cool. Because that, that riff at the beginning is so like classic. How does it go? Oh, okay. Good job. Yeah, man. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, so man. That's a good one. It'd be way fun to play at a barbecue. Because they're like, that's your ultimate. Like, everybody rips the hats off. They all have long hair. And you all headbang while eating hot dogs. <laughs> that's how you eat a hot dog. Every, every yeah, like, time you a hot dog. Bite. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last one. 
if the Sons of Liberty were fans of rock music, what song would they have played during the Boston Tea Party? What? Uh, who are the Sons of Liberty again? The guys that um, took the tea and threw it off the bridge. <laughs> off the bridge. We're the gonna take, take the tea and throw it over the bridge. Is that what that's what they did? Yeah, that's history. Yeah. I think they threw it over off the boat into the ocean. Off but... the boat, yes. A boat is a bridge when you think about it. The Sons of Liberty. The Sons of Liberty. Take that, you tea peddlers. <laughs> the tea peddlers, man. They're so, the worst. Are you saying if they were in a band, what was their album going to be if called? They were, if they were fans of rock music, what would they have played during the Boston Tea Party? During the Boston Tea Party. If they yeah. were fans of rock and roll, what would they play during the Tea Party? Um, they... My answer for this is go for play. It. Uh, shipping up to Boston by the Dropkick Murphys. Oh, that's I'm a good shipping answer. up to Boston. Ah! Yeah. Dude, I love um, that song. I'll always love that song. That's a good one. You've uh, seen, seen the Departed? Uh, have I seen? Of course, you've seen the Departed. Scorsese is one of my favorite. I know. Yes, it is. But when they play shipping up to Boston, I always get like Leonardo DiCaprio, dude. Yeah. Yes, he is with his. With it, and Matt Damon's just per. Or Matt, no. Do you like pizza, dude? It's not Do Matt like Damon. Pizzas? It's. Yeah, it's Matt Damon. It's Matt Damon. He's in the movie, his, yeah. His accent's horrible. That's what you think of it. Matt Damon's accent's horrible? Yeah. Isn't he from the Boston area? Yes, and it's terrible to listen to. Did you think, anyway. you think Marky Mark does a better job? Mark Wahlberg? Everybody does a better job. <laughs> Mark Wahlberg is one of my favorite things about that movie. Maybe, great movie. maybe not. Maybe fuck yourself. <laughs> like, it's such a great line. <laughs> That movie, if, if I were to ever show a Victorian child a movie just to watch their heads explode, it would be The Departed. <laughs> oh, man. It's such a good movie. I Your answer to now. this, though. Your answer to this. The song they would play during the Boston Tea Party. Um, it doesn't have to be a rock song. It could be any song. Any song. Any song to play during the Boston Tea Party. Make it fun. Make it exciting. Make um, you want to throw some tea off the boat. How about Milkshake by uh, Fergie. Oh, Fergie didn't <laughs> sing know. Milkshake. <laughs> oh, who sang Milkshake? Uh, she was like a one-hit wonder. Uh, oh, uh, but Milkshake. There you go. Is there any songs about? Are there any songs about tea or boats? I'm on a boat. There you I'm go. on a I'm boat, on boat, boat by Lonely Island. Island. Yeah, dude, that's a great answer. <laughs> like legit, there you go. that's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a boat. I'm on a boat. Good times, man. I love Lonely Island. Oh shoot! I just dropped all the cards. Um, Jeez. Just these three, it's okay. So nice. there you go. The, those are our three songs for his, our, mm-hmm. each one of us. Uh, you can find those songs and songs from each of the albums we talked about on the Dead Wax Weekly playlist, which we publish on both Spotify and Apple Music. So go to our Instagram for links to those because it's a, it's a fun little playlist for you. Stooge, this is all the content we had planned for today's episode. What else do you want to talk about? What else do you want to go over? Um... I think that's it. The only other thing I want, I got to do, you know, is plug Rustic Records. RusticRecordsOnline.com. Hundreds of titles to choose from. Yes. When you check out, use discount code Stooge, and you will save 5% on your order. Look Make sure you. to uh, go check them out, because like I said, there's a lot of great stuff to choose from. So. Absolutely. Go and I'm not Records. just saying that. That's the truth. It's the truth. Because you I, had one you of your provided to you from Rusty Records. And I just provided evidence why I'm not like, you know, any kind of uh, vocalist or in kind of any kind of band because I can't sing for crap. Yep, he's not getting a singing deal out of Rustic Records. So No, no, no. That's not why Yet. they yeah. Yet. Your rap career is gonna take off real soon. Little Stoogie. Oh yeah, yeah. Little, Little Stoogie. I love it. <laughs> Little Stoogie. And you have to get a face tattoo. Little Stooge. <laughs> Little Stooge. Uh, oh my gosh <laughs> another thing we want to say to everybody is happy holidays bro happy freaking yes. holidays everybody regardless of what you're celebrating if you're not celebrating whatever man we hope you have a great end of the year 2022 mm-hmm. like Stu just said has been a year but uh we've been really grateful for everybody that's listened to our podcast this is our first uh official year we've had a podcast through the entire year so yeah very exciting january um, to december January to December, man. We're very grateful for everybody that has listened to us or uh, participated in the March Vinyl Challenge or been part of our music trivia tournament. Like 2022 was a fun year for Dead Wax. So thank you everybody for for being a part of it and being on our our little journey with us. Our journey, our magical journey. journey. Our healing journey. Yeah, and since we won't even have anything until 2023, we should also wish everyone a Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. Mm -hmm. Happy New Year responsibly. There you is go. better. 
but statistically probably won't be. Yikes. <laughs> okay. Man, we became realists <laughs> on the podcast today. <laughs> became realists real quick. Uh, thank you, everybody. We're grateful for all of you to listen to us. Please, if you're not already, I hope you are because if you're listening to this, uh, subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Spotify and Apple Music so you can be able to see when we get new episodes and all that good stuff. And follow us on social media at Dead Wax Show on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. You can follow our personal handles right here. Uh, mm. We'll be posting our little holiday picture soon. So I'm get so ready jealous for... that your handle is so long. Oh my gosh. Your Schwartz is as big as mine. Anybody? My handle is so, it's so small. Yeah, I know Spaceballs. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Pizza the Hut. <laughs> anyway. More movie references. <laughs> It'll never end. I don't think we have enough. I don't think we've ever had enough. Yeah. Thank you to everybody who has made it this far and hasn't turned off this episode. And I uh, also didn't just predict our 10 top 10 for us because both of us stayed on brand for our top 10. Uh, we're grateful for all of you. We're grateful. We hope you have a happy holiday and we hope for once in your life you get out of the groove and get into the dead wax. Goodbye, everybody.